Hi everyone, Krista Cowan here with another episode of The Barefoot Genealogist. Today we are talking about Ancestry DNA. So uh, if you are an Ancestry DNA customer, you will know that yesterday, November 19th, uh, 2014, we launched um, some new changes to the Ancestry DNA program, particularly what we're calling Matching Version 2.0 and DNA circles. So today we're going to talk about both of those and answer a lot of the questions that we've seen come in over the last 24 hours since that launched. Now I have in my hands a banana and I want you to think for just a minute about what a banana has to do with genetic genealogy. Uh, I'll answer that question a little bit later in the program, but um, start thinking about that a little bit. Um, if you are watching this uh, at our regularly scheduled time, I will be on the chat immediately following the presentation to answer any additional questions you may have. Uh, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel at a later date or time, please feel free to comment. We will be monitoring those comments and responding as necessary. Now, um, here's kind of the framework for today. We're going to talk about matching and we're going to talk about DNA circles. More importantly than that, I'll walk through kind of some, some information, but I also just want to show you where you can go on the site to get the information and the education that you need for yourself. Genetic genealogy for some of us is brand new information, and so we understand that this might seem a little bit overwhelming. So we've tried to provide you with as much information as you can digest, both in bite-sized pieces and in some really extensive white papers written by our team of scientists here at Ancestry that work on um, Ancestry DNA. So with that introduction, let's go ahead and dive in and let's start by talking about um, Ancestry matching. So here's how uh, the matching process kind of flows or works. When uh, you submit a DNA sample, now whether that was your own sample or I know some of you have had family members tested far and wide, when any when any time a DNA sample comes in, that DNA sample is compared to all of the samples that we have in our database. And as of the time of this video, that is more than a half a million samples. Okay, so we've got this huge database that we're comparing you to. And when we find that you have matching DNA, based on how much DNA you share, we can estimate a relationship. Now here is some tricky stuff about that. Remember my banana. Uh, human beings share approximately 50% of their DNA with a banana. That seems kind of ridiculous when you think about it, but there it is, okay? Human beings also share about 99% of their DNA or more with other human beings. And so what our scientists are looking for when they make this comparison is the difference, like what are the differences, right? What do we have in common just because we're human beings or because we're European or because we're from the same region? And what do we have in common as DNA because we inherited it specifically from a recent common ancestor, okay? If we have inherited DNA specifically from a recent common ancestor, then that is what we call identical by descent, and that is where we create a DNA match, okay? And so that, um, you know, when we first got started looking at these matching pieces of DNA and giving you DNA matches was really exciting, but as our database grew, our scientists were able to look at that and notice some patterns that hadn't been as readily obvious before. Uh, one of the things that we have learned is that there are certain chromosomes where we have what are called pileups, meaning hundreds and thousands of people match on this particular location on a chromosome. And they match there, we've discovered, not because they inherited that DNA by descent from a recent common ancestor, but because they are human beings or because they are European or because they have some common trait or maybe they have some ancient shared family history. And so um, we have to start to ferret some of these things out and that's what the new matching does is we have been able to 
eliminate some of those chromosome locations where there are these pileups, where there are these these shared DNA segments that exist not because you inherited it from an ancestor in the last five to ten generations, but because you you know you have some deep shared ancestry. We've been able to eliminate those from the matching algorithm, and now we have taken that match list, and many of you are seeing a significant decrease in your list of matches. And that's actually a good thing because it means that the, the, the list of matches you're working with now are people that are actually cousins who descend from a recent common ancestor and your likelihood of discovering that ancestor then um, is, is much greater. We've also adjusted our confidence levels. So here is a page of my matches. Uh, you can see here, here's, um, this is actually a, a one of my parents. Um, so you can see here, I am the, the match in the parent-child category. And the confidence level here is extremely high. And if you just scroll down, you'll see this first cousin extremely high, third cousins extremely high. And as you go down the list, you'll see that that, that number changes. We have provided you with a lot of help materials to help you understand what those things mean. And so one of the things we explain is the confidence levels. So if I come in here to view all of my matches, I'm going to see this little help icon up here in the top right hand corner. If you click on that, you're going to see all of the little um, help segments that we have created to explain uh, the changes that we've made to DNA matching, okay? And here is uh, the information about confidence scores. And so I just wanna talk about this for a minute. Um, we have given you detailed information about exactly what those mean. So if, if somebody is an extremely high match at any level, right? So you saw um, I'm a match to my parent, extremely high. First cousins, third cousins, extremely high, right? What that means is that you share more than 30 centimorgans of pertinent DNA, that you have a most recent common ancestor within five or six generations, and that the confidence of that is virtually 100%. Um, it is recent enough and a strong enough connection that it is, that it is fairly conclusive. And then we just go down from there. As you share less DNA, you're gonna see that the confidence level decreases and that it gets more and more difficult to possibly identify that ancestor and, <coughs> excuse me, that that ancestor also might be further back in time. So again, you're gonna find this information in the help section and that particular section is called what does the match confidence score mean. So this confidence level here, this is about how confident we are about that, um, that connection. It's not necessarily about that specific uh, type of relationship. Again, you'll see here extremely high on three different kinds of relationships listed here on this particular match list. So that is DNA matching. Before I get away from that, let me just tell you one of the um, a couple of questions that have been asked. One is, well, what happened to all my old matches? Well, all your old matches are still available for you to download if you would like to see them. You can go into your settings, and one of the options we have there now is download V1 DNA matches. And so it'll just download them into whatever download folder you have set up on your particular computer. And it downloads, I believe, as a CSV file, which can be opened into any kind of a spreadsheet software so that you then have that to work with. Another one of the questions that we've been asked about this, well, I had matches that I lost that I know were matches. Well, you know that they were tree matches because you, you did the research or you had the shaky leaf or um, some other combination of things. What we're telling you is that those, those people are not a DNA match on a place in your DNA where it would denote that you have a most recent or a recent common shared ancestry. They may very well be a tree match, okay? But you do not share DNA with everybody that you're related to. And the further back or the more distant that relationship gets, the less the likelihood is that you do share DNA with that person. 
those people are still on Ancestry. Their trees are still on Ancestry. You can still find their trees. Um, it, they're just not DNA matches. DNA is a different, a different thing. And so we wanted to make sure that what we were showing you here in this DNA match section was only people that we know you share DNA with um, and that connect you to a recent common ancestor. We have changed the look of things just a little bit here too as well. So your ethnicity results are still available. We haven't made any changes there. Um, your DNA matches are here. Um, you, we did give you some quick links. So you can go directly to your starred matches now or directly to those, um, sh those leaf hints where you have shared ancestors. So in this case, you can see here, if I make this a little bigger, I have 72 shared ancestor hints. Um, I can go directly to my list of starred matches. I have 93 people on my list who are fourth cousins or closer. I can jump directly to that list. Okay, now let's talk about DNA circles. That's the next um, new thing that was introduced yesterday. If you scroll down, okay, past your ethnicity estimates and your matches, you're now going to see what we call DNA circles. Um, I have a lot of them. I think it, when I last checked, I had 27. I had 28, but then I think I may have lost one. I'm not quite sure. Um, interesting thing, actually, just as a side note, uh, we had um, 2,500 people uh, just in the last 24 hours since we launched this who have either made their switched their tree from private to public or um, who had taken the DNA test, <coughs> who had not yet attached their DNA results to a tree, who have done that. And because of that, just since yesterday, we've had a couple thousand new DNA circles created. So DNA circles are always going to be in flux depending on what's happening um, in the community. And so I just want to make sure that that's really clear. I also want to point out that there's a beta tag on this still. Okay, so we have, we've done our testing internally. We've done our user, our user groups. Uh, you know, we've gone through all of that process to make sure that we're presenting you with a, a great, useful, well thought out product. Um, but it is um, being shared with you now in beta, which means if you have feedback about things you'd like to see or um, something, please give us that feedback. We want to hear that. Um, so these are your DNA circles. You'll see here that DNA circles are created around a common ancestor. So let me just talk about how we do that. Um, as we go through and we match people in our database um, in you know, these one-to-one -one relationships, one of the things that we've started to notice, again, because we have more than a half a million DNA samples in our database, is we start to notice these kinds of clusters of people who are um, related to each other all in some degree. Now, some people, just by, again, by the random inheritance of DNA, some people might be related to more people in a particular group than others, whereas some people may just be related to a couple of people in that group. Um, but we see these little clusters of people. And so looking at those clusters of people, we then, as a secondary process, take a look at uh, the trees that are attached. So here's the deal. In order to be included in a DNA circle or included in this new process, your DNA results have to be attached to an online tree. So if your tree is not online, um, I would encourage you, maybe if you use a software program, just export um, 10 generations, the, the 10 known generations of your direct ancestry uh, it can just be a stripped down bare bones. It doesn't have to have photos attached or, you know, I mean, like it doesn't have to be a big fancy tree. It can just be just a flat pedigree and upload that and then attach your DNA results to that. Um, your tree does have to be public. Um, and the reason is because we're going to show the connections in these groups. And if you've said you want your tree to be private, well, then we're not going to uh, include you because we don't want to show the information in your tree that you've deemed you want to be private. So your tree has to be online, your DNA results have to be attached to it, and your tree has to be public in order to participate in DNA circles, okay? What that means for the rest of us who have attached public trees is that as new people make their tree public or put their tree online and attach their DNA results, we may see new circles pop up. So you need to make sure you check back um, often to see if 
um, new circles have shown up. Also, in order for a circle to be created, there has to be at least three unique sets of individuals with matching DNA who also have a common person in their tree. Now, here's what I mean by three unique sets of individuals. In my match, so I've had myself tested, I've had both my parents tested, and I've had my one living grandparent tested. So, um, so that means that my, myself, my father, and my grandmother all kind of sit in a little line, right? Um, my dad inherited DNA from his mother, I inherited, you know, 50% of his DNA, and so of course the three of us match. There are also cousin matches that my grandmother has that I don't have because by the time two more generations have passed, her DNA has been diluted enough that I don't share DNA with some of those people that she shares DNA with. So that's why it's always a good idea to get that oldest living generation tested wherever possible. Okay, so my, my father, my grandmother, and I, we sit in this little line and basically what we've done is um, the three of us will not make up a DNA circle because there's nothing, um, there's nothing unique about that DNA that connects us to a common ancestor, right? My grandmother is the common ancestor. So um, we are grouped as a family group. And so then there needs to be at least three other unique family groups with a common ancestor in their tree in order to create a circle. I'll show you an example of that um, again here from my tree. So let me just um, hop over here. Here you see my circles um, and here is my cute fourth great grandfather, um, Thomas Smewen. He was from, uh, from Radley, England and he uh, immigrated to the United States in the, in the mid 1800s. Uh, this is his wife, Sarah Hook and they had several children. What you can see here is a, a photo of them, some basic information about my relationship to them, uh, his, his lifespan, and then how many members are currently in this circle. So you'll see I have some circles that have 27 members, I have some that have 22, this particular circle happens to have 12. If I scroll down, you'll see that some of these circles have eight or nine, I think I had one circle, yep, here we go, down here at the bottom, that only has four, okay? So you have to have at least three to make a circle, uh, but some of these are gonna have large, large numbers of people. So here is my Thomas Smewen, and here is what we're going to learn as we come into this particular circle. So I could come here and learn more about him, okay, find out tree information about him, over here on the right hand side, you're gonna see my line of descent from him, so how I'm related to him. And then if I scroll down, um, I'm going to see the people that are in this circle. Now, I've made a little bit of a sort of privatized version of this so that I'm not exposing information about my cousin matches to all of you. Um, so here is a screenshot of that with just some names blurred out. So here's what you're going to see you're going to see all of the members of this DNA circle. You're going to see their relationship to the common ancestor, okay? You're gonna see a confidence um, level about their membership in that circle. We'll talk about that in just a minute. <coughs> you're going to see their connection to you or to the person whose DNA test results you're reviewing. So in this case, um, this person, so this is actually my grandmother, this person is a DNA match to me and also a tree match to me, okay? This person, happens to be my father, is a DNA match to me and a tree match to me. This person is not a DNA match to me, but he is a tree match to me, okay? But in order to be in this circle, he has to be a DNA match to somebody else in the circle. He can't, he can't just be in because he has the same ancestor in his tree, okay? Now, I happen to know this gentleman, and I know that he is actually a DNA match to both my father and my grandmother. So just because his DNA doesn't match mine, right, um, doesn't mean that he doesn't share DNA with other people in the group. I hope that's really clear, okay? In order to be in a circle, there has to be shared DNA and 
a common ancestor in a tree. Okay, it just means that I don't share DNA with this person, which actually, when you start to think about it, is really, really cool. Because previously, all we could see were the people that we had DNA matches with. Now, with the creation of these circles, not only do we start to um, compare matches across generations or shared um, tests that you've had other family members take, but there are also going to be people drawn into these circles because they match different cousins. So this guy could match, if, if he didn't match my, my father or my grandmother, but he did match four of the other cousins in the circle, he's still in, right? And I would have never known about him if, you know, because I don't match him. So it's just a really cool cool way to start to group together some of these um, people. I love this in particular because I am a big fan of descendancy research, meaning you pick an ancestor and you trace all of their descendants. I find that fascinating, a fascinating aspect of genealogy, and this lends itself really beautifully to that. Um, one of the reasons I love descendancy research is because very often these people are going to have information, sometimes photographs, research that they've done um, on certain people in my tree that I haven't gotten to yet or that I haven't done or things that I will never find because they've been passed down a different branch of the family. So uh, the, that's, that's how we create these DNA circles. Um, and um, then the other thing we allow you to do is to view their map, the view their details. And this will take you just to the match page, just like it always has. Now, match page hasn't changed, okay? Um, however, I do need to just make a quick note because we got some questions about this yesterday. This gentleman here, remember, not a DNA match to me. So if I go view his details, it's going to look a little different. I'm not going to be able to put any notes or stars or any, I'm not going to be able to work with that match in any meaningful way right now. Um, again, remember, this is in beta um, because he's not my DNA match. He just is in this circle. So I can still work with my DNA matches the same way I always have. Um, just It's just going to be a little bit different um, if they're not a DNA match to me. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, let me just scroll up here and show you again. Um, when you are viewing your circles, we've done the same thing like we've done when you're viewing your matches. And that is up here in the top corner, uh, besides giving you a link to provide us with some beta feedback, we've also provided you with some help material. This help material has been put together by our product managers and by our genetic scientists. And it explains uh, how we create the circles, how we calculate the levels, and let me just talk about that briefly here. Um, there are five levels that are assigned to each individual in a DNA circle. Those levels are strong, good, some, emerging, and weak. And basically what those are is those are degrees of um, evidence that this person shares the DNA of that ancestor. Okay, and so so you'll see here in this particular group, um, if I again, if I just scroll down, actually, if I come back over here, you're going to see um, most of the people in this group. And if I scrolled down further, um, you would see this is not consistent for everybody. But most of the people in this group um, are at strong, strong evidence that I share DNA uh, that I inherited from Thomas Smewin. And that evidence is strong because um, of the way that, that I connect with all of these other people. Now, some, uh, some of those confidence levels may be emerging. What that means is there's not yet enough evidence to um, confidently say that, that I inherited DNA from this particular ancestor. And so I just need to get more people tested or wait until more people are tested um, and join that circle, become part of that circle. So we do provide you with some details about how we calculate those, um, exactly what goes into that, how those relationships work that determine um, the strength of the connections and all of that. We, we have given you as m all the information we have available um, we've provided you with some information about what you can do with your DNA circles, um, how we calculate the confidence scores, how close family members are grouped together, like I talked about my dad, my grandma, and I. Um, 
what getting other family members tested will do for you, some more information about DNA inheritance, how your circles can change over time, why we created them, and this, is, this includes a little bit of a vision, um, kind of excitement for the future, right? You can start to see the possibilities of what some of the next steps might be um, in genetic genealogy as we move down this path, um, having created these kinds of circles. And then there's this extensive DNA circles white paper. I've already read it through once. Um, I plan to read it through two or three more times. I do not have a science brain, and so it takes several readings. Um, before I fully digest the information um, enough to understand it and then to be able to, to, to um, re-articulate that or to share that with other people um, uh, requires a lot of study sometimes for me. So um, great white papers both on the circles and on the matching uh, available. And again, all of that's available under help when you're in a circle or um, the match help is available when you're viewing your matches and it's going to be found there. Now, a uh, couple of final thoughts here before I wrap up. Several of you I know administer multiple tests, okay? Um, because we needed to use uh, this real estate down here, uh, the screen real estate for your circles, we had to change the way that you view your other tests. So if you just look right here, you're going to see this link, select another test. If you click that, you'll see the other, the names of the other tests that you administer. So you can just click through and view uh, any one of those from there, okay? So we didn't, uh, didn't get rid of that, just, just moved it a little bit. Well, that is all I have planned for you today. I hope you are as excited as I am about the new matching. Um, it just has tightened it up and um, made sure that the matches that I'm seeing are actually genetically um, related to me and that we have a most recent common ancestor. That's a big key. I want to be able to discover who within the last 10 generations is the common ancestor between me and these particular cousins. And then these DNA circles that, um, that are just this great step um, in moving us forward into connecting with some of these cousins and um, proving some of the relationships to some of these most recent common ancestors as more cousins join these particular circles. As I mentioned at the beginning of the program, uh, if you're watching this at our regularly scheduled time, I will be on chat in just a few minutes to answer any additional questions you may have. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to leave a comment just below the video and we will monitor those and respond as necessary. Until next time, this is Krista Cowan. Have fun climbing your family tree.